Hello, everybody, and welcome. Oh, yeah, this is great. And um, this is what inspiration looks like. This is fabulous. I'm so glad you're here. This is three years of work, scores of people, hundreds of conversations, thousands and thousands of decisions. And here we are at last to celebrate a key overlooked moment in US history that paved the way for the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA, that was signed into law 25 years ago, exactly. Now, while everyone else across the country honors the ADA today, our exhibit focuses on a key moment that made it possible. What is known as the Section 504 occupation of San Francisco's federal building in April 1977. <laughs> This, this is the heart and soul of disability rights, of pushing back, of saying we won't put up with being second class citizens another day. Think about it. More than 100 people with disabilities and their allies sacrificed everything, health, jobs, relationships, to camp out in a government building for 26 days until they got what they wanted. Enforcement of a law that said any entity that received government money, a school, a university, a hospital, a post office, could not discriminate against someone with a disability. 13 years later, the ADA expanded on this with a national law that prohibits discrimination solely on the basis of disability in employment, public services, and accommodations. I'm Katherine Kudlick, and I'm director of the Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State. Yay. <laughs> Patient No More is part of our mission to bring together scholarship, activism, and the arts to upend old thinking about people with disabilities. We approach disability as a creative challenge, as a beginning rather than as an end. Named for disability activist and historian Paul K. Longmore, the Longmore Institute seeks to fight the stigma and prejudice against people with disabilities that, led to that lead to astronomical unemployment rates, housing discrimination, repeated cuts in services, lack of opportunity. We do this by planting new ideas, new stories into the heads of disabled and non-disabled people alike. Patient No More is the best example I can think of for replacing dreary stories of low expectations, limited capacity, and disabled people as needy takers who offer nothing with a tale of grit, determination, ingenuity, and making real contributions that lead to deep, far-reaching change for everyone. Once teachers, service providers, politicians, potential employers, colleagues, neighbors, and of course kids, have better images of people with disabilities. There's no telling what we can make happen. We come from a proud tradition of people with, who dreamed big and took action. Today, we, can, we gather in a building named for one of them, Ed Roberts. And today, we honor more. K organizers Kitty Cohn, who sadly died back in March, and Judy Human, who is in Washington, D.C. to celebrate the ADA, plus dozens of 504 protesters and allies who are here in person, in videos, in photos, and in recordings. Shortly, Ron Washington, Jeff Moyer, Dennis Billups, and others will join me up here to, for the celebration. Now, each participant is wearing a name tag uh, that says Emergency 504 Coalition Member. Um, if you can't read name tags, just ask anybody to introduce you to one. They're all out and about and, and here. And, um, uh, but right now, so the, the room can honor you 504 folks. Please let everyone know who you are. Stand up, call out, wave, pound, or whatever way works. This is what inspiration looks like. 
The kiosks here in the atrium and over in the rotunda look deceptively simple, but as you'll soon discover, or may have discovered already, there's a fascinating story full of passion and surprises. Be sure to check out the access features that we built in from the beginning, an audio tour, braille rail, American Sign Language, captioning, text size, heights of objects, and more. I think of our exhibit as continuing the spirit of resourcefulness, collaboration, and playfulness at the heart of the 504 protest. Our goal was to share this remarkable story with as many people as possible, to promote innovative forms of access, and to celebrate people who made a real difference. As you wander around the kiosks, you'll notice that we tried to create an exhibit that offers a rich experience for all visitors, an approach that's still all too rare. We're especially proud of the captivating videos of stories told by 504 participants, many who have never been heard from before. It was a great experience to watch SF State students who were roughly the same age as the protesters back in 1977 um, interview an earlier generation of social justice activists. We're also proud that the various stations of the exhibit are models of ingenuity that fit in tight spaces like elevators and go places not necessarily designed for them. And who would have known there could be so many ways to contribute to history through an exhibit? In honor of the 504 struggle, we invite you to broadcast your own disability message. There are stations in the rotunda um, and with a, um, with a bullhorn and a camera where you can share with the world what makes you patient no more. And just as sometimes being subversive was the only way for 504 occupiers to get through the day, we've left some unexpected quirky details to spice up your visit. In the spirit of 504, I invite you to meet others at the kiosks and experience a new form of camaraderie. You might befriend a braille reader or an eye user, so together you may discover something unexpected. This is what inspiration looks like. As we gather to celebrate what happened back in 1977 and the ADA, we must remember that much work remains. People back then engaged in a breed of activism that wouldn't be possible today. Despite these remarkable accomplishments, many people don't enjoy disability rights, and too many aren't even aware that such rights exist. Yet activism lives on in new forms as this exhibit shows. Really, this is what inspiration looks like. Thinking ahead to the future, I hope that teachers, students, and the public will leave with new tools for approaching disability as opportunity and disabled people as agents of change. And I hope that through this exhibit, you too will be inspired to spread the message embodied in the 504 protest. We'd be delighted to partner with anyone to bring the exhibit to communities and groups. Thanks to funding from Cal Humanities, we have a traveling version of the exhibit. At the Longmore Institute, we're excited to already be planning future projects and expand ongoing ones like Superfest International Disability Film Festival, which will be in mid-November. But as all of you know, these things take a lot of money, uh, more than our budget allows. If you believe in the importance and uniqueness of an exhibit like this one, I ask that you consider donating to the Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability to give us a chance to continue work in this spirit. There's information in your program and online about how to support the Institute and if you aren't on our mailing list already, be sure to sign up and follow us on social media to get the latest news. After three years of work, how can I even begin to thank everyone who needs this, um, who made this experience amazing and gave so much of their time, energy, creative spirit? Many more are printed in your program, so let me just pull out a few here. Thanks to everyone at the Ed Roberts campus who welcomed us into your space. Thanks to Pino Trogu, Sylvan Lin, Sachi Cunningham, Robert Eep, Tim Kerbavez, Gizmo Art Production, and Digital Fusion Media who worked on the mural and exhibit itself. 
Thanks to Anthony Tussler and Holland DeLille, who generously donated their photographs, which you'll appreciate throughout the exhibit. Anthony has been helping uh, behind the scenes in, on many things, and Holland has a book with many of her 504 photographs for sale back near the cafe to the um, left of where, uh, the other left, um, toward the right, toward the, toward the screen, um, the big screen. Um, near the cafe um, th uh, to the left of the fountain, and you can get copies there. Thanks to all of our donors, but in particular, there's San Francisco State University that has be been behind this project in many ways, large and small, for the past three years. Thanks also to funding from the East Bay Community Foundation and Cal Humanities. We also benefited from generous in-kind donations from Lighthouse for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Talon Entertainment, hire them for your uh, AV needs, James Lebrecht at Berkeley Sound Artists, and SF State's Disability Programs and Resource Center. And a big, thank to all, big thanks to all our volunteers for today. And, yeah. And how to thank my core team and our amazing significant others. There's curator and graphic designer Fran Osborne, who I'm sure you'll agree came up with an incredible exhibit. And there's content developer and project manager, associate director Emily Badix, who made everything happen. Uh, yeah, she made everything happen, and she does it with making almost it seem effortless. It's incredible. There aren't words for this kind of thanks. Just know there wasn't a day when I didn't pinch myself about how lucky I was to work with the two of you. Nor are there adequate words for expressing thanks to the participants of 504, then and now, here and gone. It boils down to something quite simply re simple, really. You made the world a better place, and we all owe you the gift of carrying your work forward. Thanks to you, I can say with all my heart that I know what inspiration looks like, a feeling I know that everyone in this room shares. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> Now it's my great pleasure to give you a taste of the exhibit by showing the intro video called This is 504. Um, San Francisco State Journalism Professor Sachi Cunningham created this inter overview with us, which lasts about 12 minutes, um, and it has captioning and audio description. It's over on the people on the side of the room where the video is make a big loud noise over there. Uh, guys. It's over, over. I guess those of you that can see, I'm pointing that way. And uh, anyway, uh, enjoy. A white man signs. This is five, oh, four. He holds a faded, torn poster. All persons with disabilities. The federal government is trying to steal our civil rights. Demonstrate to demand signing of 504 regulations. Words appear. The Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State University invites you to discover a remarkable overlooked moment in U.S. history. When people with disabilities occupied the federal building in San Francisco for 26 days to demand their civil rights. A black and white photo of a black man slides left and is joined by a video of the man. It was, it was just great, a great time moment in history. Words appear. Known as the Section 504 sit-in, the protest profoundly changed the lives of people with and without disabilities and paved the way for the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, in 1990. A black and white photo of an Asian man in a wheelchair, a color photo of him laughing. The plan was originally for the demonstrators to be outside. The viewers were to go in and make appointments. And when the time came to Leave. We didn't leave. An empty chair by figures sleeping on a mattress on the floor. Vintage color footage of the marchers outside. The occupiers inside. A hand-lettered sign, support, not sympathy. A photo, a video of a white man. He signs. 
They realize that this is a this is a a time where they can actually have some kind of empowerment, where they could actually say to the government, "We're not going to take the kind of standards that you've given us before. There were no ramps for disabled persons at the time. There were no elevators for the disabled. We would like more a piece of the American pie." This is the first time that I've come out. In a, in a real public way and said, hey, no, I don't accept that. No, I am not second class and I don't accept that. Are we going to perpetuate segregation in our society? We're one of the largest minorities in, in this country. I can tell you that every time you raise issues of sex but equal, the outrage of disabled individuals across the country is going to continue. It is going to be ignited. There will be more takeovers of buildings until finally maybe you begin to understand our position. A black and white photo of a white woman with glasses and dark wavy hair. People had been waiting since 1973 for the regulations to be issued. On TV. Instead of giving in, they move in in what will become the longest occupation of a federal building in U.S. history. 504 means access to public transportation and public spaces. It means free public education and no job discrimination. All basic American civil rights, proud and defiant, Five to six hundred people in wheelchairs with walking canes and hearing aids storm the regional office of health, education, and welfare in San Francisco. Their purpose? To stop discrimination against the disabled, no matter what the consequences. There were huge windows in the federal building, and there were people signing the press releases on one side of the windows to people who would re-sign them on the ground to make sure they got it right. That's the way that I know that we got the press releases out. On TV. Currently here is being brought over by Delancey Street. However, the Salvation Army has not been able to come up with blankets or cots, that sort of thing, so they are still frantically out looking for that. The regional commissioner's office got turned into the refrigerator because he put the plastic over the air conditioner, draped it across the room over a table and down in front of the table. And so underneath was freezing. And the Black Panther Party was there every day, bringing us really good food and settling disagreements amongst the people that were getting frazzled and worn out and stuff. And we had an understanding that our oppression was not the only form of oppression in America. I think this is going to end up being a historical event for the country and beyond that, because this is whether the Montgomery actions and civil rights movement, our Stonewall and gay rights movement, and so on. This is the event in which disabled people said that we would assert our rights. A photo of a white woman with light brown hair. It wasn't typical for people with developmental disabilities and mental health disabilities and all these various um, disabilities that had not necessarily worked together before to really come together on one issue. I feel real good because it's like all this anger that I've had is finally making sense and it's being put, turned outward yeah. where it belongs yeah. into changing things and, and that feels really strong and positive. We were not the poor people to be kept in somebody's basement. We needed to be proud of having disabilities. A blind white woman. And being fully functional, not overcoming disabilities, but rather having disabilities and being fully functional human beings and that we could show the world that. On TV, victory for the disabled. Tonight, 35 million Americans are no longer second-class citizens. Regulation 504, what is being called a Bill of Rights for all of this country's handicap, has finally been signed by HEW Secretary Joseph Califano. Secretary of HEW Joseph Califano called them the oppressed and hidden minority. Vintage footage. The new rules will usher in a new era of civil rights that will change the face of America, starting with such things as curbstones at intersections. Programs in virtually every institution that receives government funds must be made accessible to the handicapped within two months.
the protesters leave the building. We thank all of you who supported us from the outside. We worked so hard also. And I might add, the struggle has really just begun. There's so many more things we're going to have to deal with in the future. And this coalition is a part of a national movement, and we're going to stick together and continue to fight for our civil rights. Every person in that building was making a sacrifice of one form or another. And I think what came out of that was people realizing that in banding together and working together, you can get much more to happen than if everybody individually is trying to do something. People were just except us now, keep the movement alive. I think, you know, if we don't keep pushing, you know, people will forget. Vintage footage, a hand-lettered sign, rights for the disabled, sign 504 unchanged. A woman dances with a man in a wheelchair. To learn more about the exhibit, visit patientnomore.org. Words appear in order of appearance. Bill Johnson, 504 protester. Ron Washington, 504 protester. Bruce Oka, 504 protester. Eddie Urigi, 504 protester. Dennis Billups, 504 protester. Judy Human, 504 protest organizer. Ed Roberts, disability activist and director of the California Department of Vocational Rehabilitation in 1977. Kitty Cohn, 504 protest organizer. Kathy Cramner, Swami Suharananda, 504 protester. Herb Levine, 504 protester. Bonnie Regina, 504 protester. Elaine Brown, chairman of the Black Panther Party in 1977. Mary Lou Breslin, 504 protester. Karen Rose, 504 protester. Linda Gill, 504 protester. Jim Angval, 504 protester. Jeff Moyer, musician leading the crowd in song and 504 protester. Patient No More is a project created by the Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State University to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the ADA, patientnomore.org. Interviews recorded in 2014 by undergraduate students from Journalism 321, History 484, and staff from the Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State University. Additional footage provided by Disability Rights Education and Defense Fund and the GLBT Historical Society. Edited by Sachi Cunningham. Audio description by AudioWise. Description voiced by Terry Grossman. Copyright Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State University, 2015. How about it? Yeah, good stuff. Um, for people that are still looking for seating, we have some over by the rotunda, um, over um, by the main entrance. Um, okay, um, since 1977, many occupiers have passed away, and I'd like to introduce protest participant Ron Washington, uh, who you just saw in the video. Uh, we worked especially hard to track him down, and we're super glad we did, um, and he will offer a commemoration. Ron? Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to see so many faces that I have not seen in, since the demonstration. I learned uh, since being here today that Kitty Khan has passed on and many, many more has passed on and if we could 
just have a moment of silence and memory of all of those who participated and without them it would not have been as successful as it is today. Thank you. Thank you and enjoy your day. Um, our next um, guest uh, perhaps needs no introduction, at least to the 504 participants. Um, he serenaded um, them for 26 days, and probably more with the victory and all that. Uh, and uh, he drove out from Colorado. Uh, Jeff Moyer is a songwriter and 504 participant, and he will sing Hold On, uh, that was kind of the anthem for 504. Uh, for those who want to sing along, I'm talking slowly so he can get set up here. Um, for those who want to sing along, the lyrics start on page five in your program. And, uh, and um, the song he's singing again is called uh, Hold On. And some of you from 504 will know the words already. All right. Okay. When, uh, when we were planning the demonstration, actually there were the four key planners, Kitty Cohen, Dick Santos, who also has passed, Mary Jane Owen, and Judy Human. And uh, then there was a teach-in, and during the teach-in I said, well, has anyone thought about a bullhorn? And they hadn't, so I needed to go get a bullhorn. And I said, well, how about some music? They thought that'd be a good idea. So I went home and went through my Pete Seeger albums and Hold On was just such a wonderful, stirring song. So as we ended the protest, there was a program and Ed Roberts spoke and then I, I played Hold On and then we went into the building and I was not one of the 26 day heroes at all. I had a young family, an infant son, and I was uh, commuting. But uh, I was fortunate enough to have a little part in it. So are we ready? Yep. So, sound guys? All right. Civil rights were knocking at our door. But Carter wouldn't stand on 504. Keep your eye on the prize and hold on. Hold on. After four years of delay, we've come to claim the ground we gained. We had our eye on the prize and held on. Hold on. You gotta hold on. Keep your eye on the prize and hold on. Well, a movement standing strong and tight With one dream to win our civil rights Keep your eye on the prize And hold on, now you carry it For 26 days, unafraid, 125 people with and without disabilities stayed. They had their eye on the prize, they held on. Hold on. Thirty-eight years have rolled on past the door, but we 
still must fight for 504. Keep your eye on the prize and hold on. Won't stop until the battle is won and enforcement of the laws begun. Keep your eye on the prize and hold on. Knocking at our door, but Carter wouldn't stand on 504. We had our eye on the prize and we held on. Hold on, you gotta hold on. Keep your eye on the prize and hold on. Keep your eye on the prize. Hold on. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, thank you. It gives me now great pleasure to introduce Dennis Billups, uh, 504's Chief Morale Officer. Uh, who will introduce some 504 uh, uh, Patient No More chants. Um, once we connected with Dennis, we knew we were dealing with a, a kind of force of nature, uh, and it became immediately clear that his title as Chief Morale Officer is very well deserved. Dennis. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor and a pleasure to hear the voices, the faces, the memories after so long being uh, in 504. It's been almost 38 years, almost 40 years. Many have gone before us uh, to make sure this happened. And I just would like to say thank you. Because without your participation and your help and your divine love, we would not be here today. So I would like to just say my story begins with 504 when I decided that the schools and the institutions were not helping us enough and we need to do more things. So when I entered the 504 building, I decided either it was going to be make or break and we broke. I want to say uh, thank you to the people at San Francisco State as well. And I'd ask one favor of you. I was evicted out of my home two months ago. So I would like to ask you if you could call Wells Fargo and Mohad and just say, I support Dennis Billups. All right? Besides that, let's get on with the um, function and um, let's do a 504. Are we ready? OK, all right. All right, this is an old 504 one. Uh, I think I remember this one. Uh, I think I wrote this one. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, it goes one, two, 504. Kicking in the bathroom door. Open up those stations that. We are number one citizens, that's a fact. Sound off. Sound off. One, two. one, two. Sound off. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> off. One, two. Sound off. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four, we're rolling in victory now. We're coming to the victory now. We're open the door. We don't give it more. We open the city now. Sound off. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Thank you. Is that two minutes? In the spirit of having, thank you, Dennis, that was wonderful. Um, in the spirit of uh, 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 kind of keeping the activism alive, we have the interactive stations in the Rotunda area. We've invited a couple of people up to give us inspiration about these, uh, the right kind of inspiration, um, about these uh, uh, sort of things that make us patient no more. And our first presenter will be Justin Steinberg, who's part of a new generation of disability activists. Justin. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> I am patient no more because we need more accessible playgrounds for future children with disabilities. Next, we have Bruce Oka, yeah, who's a 504 yeah. participant, and he will tell us what makes him patient no more. <laughs> yes, please. Hey, I'm patient no more because I'm tired of being excluded. We need to be included more by our city and state government officials. Our, our lives need to matter more to them than they do. They certainly matter a lot to us. So we need to make them understand that if they don't include us, we're going to kick in the door. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bruce. Um, our next um, presenter will be Mahalia Leclerc, who was an intern at the Longmore Institute, and she's going to tell us what makes her patient no more. Um, I'm patient no more because in grade school they told me to put my problems in a paper bag and leave them outside the door instead of giving me accommodation. I'm patient no more because in high school they told me accommodations would be a crutch that held me back and to not use them. I am patient no more because in, high, in college, uh, it cost me over $900 that my insurance company would not cover to prove that I had a disability so that I could access accommodations in school. I am patient no more because accommodations are a crutch. And like a crutch, they help me to walk to be successful. And they definitely do not hold me back. Our next, uh, our next presenter is Corbett O'Toole, who was up in the 504 inside the building. Corbett. I am patient no more that even though families were part of the 504 sit-in, families that have disabled people in them are still treated with incredible disrespect. And families that have parents and grandparents who have disabilities lose our children at alarming rates. And that's going on. There's only two lawyers in the United States that are available to families who are losing custody of their kids. And so most of us are losing custody of our kids when it's challenged. Thanks, Corbett. And our final uh, presenter um, uh, is Catherine Murphy, who was a student assistant at the Longmore Institute. Um, and Katie? I'm patient no more because the Judge Rottenberg Center, a residential facility in Canton, Massachusetts, uses aversive electric shocks, that is jolts, as punishment and behavioral conditioning for its disabled students, the majority of whom are black and Latino. So again, be sure to record or um, otherwise register what makes you patient no more in the rotunda. I want to thank everyone for coming. Help us celebrate this amazing moment. And uh, we hope to hear, hear from you if you're interested in partnering and or supporting our work. Without further ado, go forth and go out 
and explore the exhibit and the world. Thank you very, very much for coming.